Okay, now we're gonna do it all over again, except we're gonna use the hard way. And the hard way involves parameterizing R um, by its arc length, okay? And recall that right now it's parameterized by basic T, which is probably time. Okay, so here it is over here. And let's say we're interested in at length T sub O, which is always zero because that's where something starts. If I start measuring something, it starts, it has to start at zero and then it has to end somewhere and we'll call it T, okay? So from zero to T, this is our new parameter S. Okay, so let's just do that real quick. I, I've, I have a video on it already if, if you're not familiar with it. So um, what do we need to do? Well, first thing we need is we need the forward velocity. Okay, and that's a uh, it, derivative cosine. It's still a negative sign. Okay, so we got that. Um, now what's the, the magnitude? We actually figured that out in the last video, and that was square root of 3. Okay, now remember, if, if we want the length of this thing, normally we'd go from A to B, and we take the uh, integral of the velocity, okay? But basically this L, okay, we, we want to parameterize this thing by L, okay? So basically we're going to turn L, see like if this curve length right here, I mean we're parameterizing it by S, so essentially it's S, you know? So let's go ahead and do that. So S is equal to, and we're going from 0 to T. And what was our, uh, okay, let's square three. Here's the thing is, is now we take it with respect to a new variable, tau, okay, because we already use T, we already use S, so we're really just making this up. Um, it's really not important at this point. Maybe later on, if you're a mathematician, we'll explore it, but, um, well, the, the fundamental theorem just says that, hey, this is equal to, um, S is equal to square root of 3t. So let's go ahead and write that. So S is equal to square root of 3t. So t is equal to S over square root of 3. And this is all equal to t of S. Okay, now remember here's our original uh, position vector and it is parameterized by time itself maybe you know or something else we're, we're interested again in just a certain parameter s so what we're going to do is we're going to take this t of s and we're going to plug it in we're going to sub it in the t so it's going to end up looking like this r of t of s okay and if we, wanted to, if we wanted to take the derivative of this whole thing, we would use the chain rule, wouldn't we? Because now we have a, you know, a composite function. So we would have something that would look like, and I'm getting kind of sloppy, but dr with respect to s would be dt, or dr, I'm sorry, dr with respect to t. See, we're just, we're just going in from the chain rule. And then we're gonna go d of t with respect to s. And, yeah, it's kind of an informal way, but, you know, they cancel out, and that gives us, you know, our deal again. Okay, so let's, um, let's go ahead and do that, okay? First thing I'm going to write down is dr ds, okay? And what was that equal to? Well, that's equal to dr dt times dt ds. Okay, well it looks like we're going to have to find dr dt. Well, didn't we already do that? Right there? Uh, forward velocity is, in fact, dr dt. So that's a negative, negative sine t, cosine t, and what, just plain 2, right? dr dt. Now we need dt ds. Well, let's go back here and let's see here. We found out that t through parameterization was equal to s over square root of 3. Okay, so t was equal to s over square root of 3. Okay, so I think you can uh, 
figure that one out pretty easily, and that's just one over square root three, okay? So if I take dr ds, what am I gonna end up with? I'm gonna end up, so dr ds, okay, that's gonna end up, it's gonna end up being, let's, I'm gonna write it, I'm gonna do the abbreviated way of writing this. So dr divided by, so, so basically what I'm doing, this is another thing up here, this is dr dt divided by ds dt, okay? So let's see here, dr ds is just going to be equal to sine t cosine t 2 okay now and that is that that's actually by definition the unit tangent vector okay let's go back to that other example that we did uh, just a minute ago remember the easy way what is that it's the exact same thing right there okay so here's what we'll do now is we're gonna based on our little work little work we did there, we're, we're going to go ahead and make the claim that t equals forward velocity over magnitude, okay, is equal to dr dt, okay, over ds dt, okay, we're just working with fractions, not kind of, not really, but just kind of. Then we end up back with the chain rule, okay? And that gives us our unit tangent vector again, okay? So I don't know why they do that really. Um, I don't. The, the only reason I can think of um, for them doing it that way is they'll say like, here's your space curve C, okay? Well, if I was only interested in what's going on on this parameter, S, and it wouldn't do too good to take the uh, tangent vector out there, would it? So, maybe that's just a way of looking at it, okay? So, but that's where it comes from, and I just want to show you guys it's the same thing, okay? And but there's all these T's and V's and S's and DT's and DR's and DS's and DT's and DT's and DS's and T's and B's and N's and there's all sorts of shit floating around out there. So just, just, just a little clarification if you needed it. You know, I'm not trying to, this isn't the theory of everything. So thanks for watching. I'll see you.